So in review, I demonstrated the following things. The Illuminati spread after 1785 with the help of the Rothschilds. Freemasonry was infected by the Illuminati. The United States was infected with the Illuminati as early as 1798. Freemasonry wants New World Order, discovered in the Grand Orient Archives. Freemasonry is satanic. Illuminati and Freemasons control the New World Order. Freemasons kill whistleblowers. Illuminati, elite, and Freemasons attend satanic Bohemian Grove. Vatican is involved with the Grove in the New World Order. Vatican is anti-Christian. And Vatican is involved with the Freemasons. Now, some people believe that Christianity was created by the New World Order. In this last part of the film, I will show you why that is illogical, fallacious, and not accepted by real scholars. Films like Zeitgeist and books like Zeitgeist's main source, The Christ Conspiracy, talk of these kind of things. The first thing I will refute is the idea that Jesus is derived from mythological gods. Now, Mike Lacona made a critique on the book The Christ Conspiracy by Acharya S, which is Zeitgeist's main source. A lot of this next information comes from Lacona's critique, his sources, and my own research. Let's first look at Krishna. Is it true that Krishna is so similar to Jesus that Christianity must have borrowed from Hinduism? Well, Dr. Edwin Bryant, professor of Hinduism at Rutgers University, is a scholar on Hinduism. He has translated the Bhagavata, Purana, or Life of Krishna, for Penguin World Classics, and is currently writing a book to be titled, The Quest of Historical Krishna. In a response to the question of Krishna being crucified, Dr. Edwin Bryant replied, quote, that is absolute and complete nonsense. There is absolutely no mention anywhere which alludes to a crucifixion." Unquote. He also added that Krishna was killed by an arrow from a hunter who shot him in the heel. He died and there was no resurrection. He then stated that Acharya S doesn't know what she's talking about. There are absolutely no Indian gods portrayed as crucified. Acharya S claims there are 24 comparisons of Krishna to Jesus, while Dr. Edwin Bryant stated that 14 of her 24 comparisons are wrong, and the 15th is partially wrong. What about the other nine? Well, Benjamin Walker in his book The Hindu World and Encyclopedia Survey of Hinduism states that there can be no doubt that the Hindus borrowed these nine similarities from Christianity. Dr. Edwin Bryant, as well as many other scholars, note that these parallels come from the Bhagavata Purana, which is from the 7th to 11th century, way after the Gospels, and the Harivamsa, which is from the 4th to the 6th centuries, way after the Gospels. So in other words, these similarities to Christianity in the Hindu text do not appear until after the Gospels were already written. This means they borrowed from Christianity, and not vice versa. Acharya S. further claims that Christianity has failed in India because they've recognized Christianity as an imitation of their much older traditions. To this, Dr. Bryant simply commented, quote, stupid comment, unquote. Acharya's and Zeitgeist's claims that Christianity has borrowed substantially from Hinduism is without merit. Their claims are false, unsupported, and exhibit a lack of understanding in the Hindu faith. Next up is Buddha. Acharya lists 18 similarities. Mike Lacona emailed Professor Chu Fan Yu, Chair of the Department of Religion at Rutgers University. Dr. Yu specializes in Buddhist studies. She simply said, quote, None of the 18 are correct. A few, however, have some correctness, but are badly distorted, unquote. Dr. Yu said the following about Acharya S, quote, The woman you speak of is totally ignorant of Buddhism. It is very dangerous to spread misinformation like this. You should not honor her by engaging in a discussion. Please ask her to take a basic course in world religion or Buddhism before uttering another word about things she does not know, unquote. Next is Horus. Now, Acharya and Zeitgeist say there's 18 similarities. Uh, Isis, Mary? No, it was Isis. There's no scholarly reference saying it was Isis, Mary. Anyway, Isis was Horus's mother, who was widowed to Osiris. Isis practiced magic to raise Osiris from the dead, putting pieces of his body back together. When she did this, she became pregnant, and so on and so forth. She was not a virgin, she was widowed to Osiris, and had sex with his intact dead body. So there was no virgin birth. Crucifixion and resurrection, uh, I could find no scholarly reference to support this claim. On the contrary, Horus is never said to have been crucified, nevertheless to have even died. There was no death and resurrection, but a merger of Horus and Osiris. And Osiris never resurrects, as he is forbidden to return to the world of the living. So no crucifixion, no resurrection, that is nonsense. December 25th, Horus' birth was on the 31st day of the Egyptian month Koyak. And the December 25th issue is of no relevance anyway. Nowhere does the New Testament associate this date with Jesus' birth. That was made up 500 years later. 
As for the Twelve Disciples claim, neither I nor Miller nor any scholarly reference have found a reference for this claim. We find four semi-divine hero Shemzu, we find reference to 16 human followers and a group of Mensu who helped Horus in battle. We cannot find Twelve Disciples anywhere. And Horus is not the sun god that's Ra, so we can't use the all solar gods have Twelve Disciples zodiac routine. Horus did not have Twelve Disciples, that's fiction. As for the Horus being born in a manger claim, uh, scholarly references say Horus was born in a swamp and know nothing of a star or wise man of any number. The word S-U-N and S-O-N are only the exact same sounding in the English language and Horus isn't even the sun god, so sun, S-U-N, is irrelevant. Zeitgeist has no logic. Um, the following three claims have no merit in academic literature and Egyptian scholars know nothing of them. Uh, the first one, child teacher at 12 in a temple. The second one, uh, 30 was baptized and then was baptized by Anna the baptizer. Uh, these three are not substantiated by anyone. As for miracles, they are abundant among religious groups that could not possibly have influenced one another, such as Aztecs and Roman MRs, so this similarity carries no force. Uh, one supposed one was walking on water, which cannot be found in any scholarly literature. What can be found is he was thrown in the water, but he never walked on water. That's just nonsense. The mountaintop encounter? I will read both encounters, and you decide if you see causation. First, Jesus. Jesus completes his fast in the wilderness. Satan tempts Jesus to worship him. Jesus refuses. Now here's Horace's. During battle, Horace rips off Set's testicles, and Set rips out Horace's eye. They try to initiate intercourse to prove dominance. Horus catches set semen and then throws it in the river. Horus later masturbates, spreads his semen on lettuce, which set consumes. They stand before the gods, and Horus is granted rule. How is that similar at all? Once you look into this stuff, it's just ridiculous. Acharya and Zeitgeist claim their similar titles. They say Horus was known as Way, the Truth, the Light, Messiah, God's Anointed Son, Son of Man, Good Shepherd, Lamb of God, the Word of Truth. Okay, first of all, I could not find any scholarly reference for these titles. Uh, what I did find was Great God, Chief of Powers, and Master of Heaven. Uh, so I think they just made those up to try and uh, make a case. Look, we don't want to hear from Gerald Massey, who was shut down long ago and rejected. We want the original citation from Egyptian records. Massey is a secondary source, so show us your primary sources, Zeitgeist and Acharya. Uh, and make sure they're not subjective, because if they're subjective, your opinion is already going to be presupposed. So, the difference between Jesus and Horus uh, is enormous, and uh, around 95% of these supposed similarities are pure fiction. The other 5% are subjective and can only be expected due to sheer uh, probability. For example, there are many coincidences between Jesus and JFK. Which mystery gods actually experienced a resurrection from the dead? Certainly no early texts refer to any resurrection of Attis. Attempts to link the worship of Adonis to a resurrection are equally weak. Nor is the case for a resurrection of Osiris any stronger. After Isis gathered together the pieces of Osiris' dismembered body, he became lord of the underworld. And of course, no claim can be made that Mithras was a dying and rising god. French scholar André Belanger concludes, The conception that the god dies and is resurrected in order to lead his faithful to eternal life is represented in no Hellenistic mystery religion. Not one clear case of any alleged resurrection teaching appears in any pagan text before the late 2nd century AD, almost 100 years after the New Testament was written. Parallels between the pagan myths of dying and rising gods and the New Testament accounts of the resurrection of Jesus are now regarded as remote to say the least. If anyone borrowed any ideas from anyone, it seems it was the agnostics who took up Christian ideas. The first real parallel of a dying and rising god does not appear until AD 150, more than 100 years after the origin of Christianity. So if there is any influence of one or the other, it was the influence of the historical event of the New Testament resurrection on mythology, not the reverse. We find almost no trace of cults of dying and rising gods in first century Palestine. Moreover, as Hans Grass observes, it would be unthinkable in any case that the original disciples would come sincerely to believe that God had raised Jesus from the dead just because they had heard myths about Osiris.
Acharya S. and Zeitgeist also claim that astrology played a large role in the formation of the Christian Church.